All right, so we're going to get started uh, today, and we're really today is kind of a, a little bit of a repeat of what we did on Wednesday last last week, in that we're going to be working with the interiors, so you get a little bit more time to fine tune the interiors and, and kind of tweak settings and materials and all that sort of thing. Uh, but we're going to switch and do a night render of the scene. And that's kind of the big switch. So there's not too much. And actually, I probably won't talk the full time today because the bulk of this is catch up, get ready, and then perform a night render. So I am going to walk through the night render setups just so that you guys can, can see that. Um, Abdul asked a great question earlier on. Some of you were here, some of you weren't about setting and positioning the camera. So I'm going to go through that process again because I think it'll be useful uh, to kind of reiterate that. Uh, and then we'll do a nighttime rendering. I'll set up the HDRIs and um, we'll, we'll perform a little rendering. And then I'll let you guys go and you can start working on kind of fine tuning things. So we're really kind of starting to get to the point where most of this should be resolved and, and starting to wrap up. Next class, we will do obviously the exterior night rendering. And so by the time we're done with next class, so by the time we're done with this week, let's say on Sunday, um, the bulk of this model should be done. And from here, going forward, we're going to start moving into things like cutting sections and, um, you know, line drawings, elevations, plans, etc. So the more done your project is, the better off you're going to be. Remember, this is ultimately your final project. So the more done you are, this is, this is saving you time later on. So let me go ahead and, and share my screen. I'll go ahead and share it. Give me a second to get organized. Oh, that stays there. Sorry. I was need my chat window. There we go. All right. So um, I went ahead and I pulled up my my file. Uh, and actually, I switched over to the ocean file because I just I did the, the um, Lake Tahoe file last time. Um, I'm trying to show you both. So it's the same retreat and it's just inserted into different scenes. Obviously, you're only going to pick one scene and it's going to be inserted just in that one scene. But uh, the first question centered around setting up your view. So I have an exterior view already set up. So let me go to set view and let me go to render one just so we switch everything around to my exterior view. Here's my exterior view. There's my ocean, et cetera. And I need to try to figure out how do I get this interior view? And so first off, uh, my exterior view with nothing selected over here on the right side under properties, I have my lens length set at 28. And that 28, I think, works really nice for an exterior view. But when we switch to the interior view, oftentimes we need the lens length to be a little bit wider. So we're seeing more of what's, what's inside. And you could almost get to a fisheye. If I went to 10, for example, we're going to get a really wide distorted view. So as I zoom in here, you're going to see that things get really distorted. And sure, could I do that? Yeah, absolutely. But it's a little wonky. And so instead, I might do something at about 18. And I found 18 to be about right in terms of not too much distortion, but you can also kind of work your way into what's, what's a good particular view. So when I set this stuff up, I want to try to, as close as I can, get myself into the building. So I'll, I'll move around a little bit. You'll have a harder time getting yourself into the building when it's the, um, the Tahoe site rather than the ocean site, just because the site's so big. If you're struggling, turn off the site context. So turn off, you know, in this case, I would turn off the ocean block like that. And then with that block turned off, recenter the zoom on your, your retreat and then try working from there. Sometimes that helps. Okay. So I'm trying to get this set right. Now, this actually ended up turning out okay from a view standpoint. However, maybe I wanna spend a little bit of time uh, and, and fine tune it. And to do that, I'm gonna click this little down arrow and I'm going to go to the camera. It's the set camera menu. And I'm going to choose to show camera. And when I do that, it's going to be shown in the other views. So in this case, in the top view, we're seeing my camera. This is the placement of the camera. And if I move that, and I can use a move or I could turn on the gumball and move it, as I move it, you'll see that my view changes. So I can actually move it toward the back of this room. I can move it forward. And we can see how that's, that's kind of modifying. The key here is that I wanna make sure it's actually in the building and that it's not 
somehow accidentally inside the wall of the building. So like that's inside the wall right now. So let's make sure it's, it's definitely inside the building. There it is. I can adjust my angle. I'm gonna move it back a little bit so we can see out those, those windows just a little bit. And that's not too bad. The other thing that I can do is if I look at it in the side view, there it is, I can control how high this camera is. So we want it to be about eye level. So maybe I need to move it up just a little bit. All right, we'll move it up just a little bit. And right there. So I'm kind of keeping one eye on the render view and one eye on my other viewports as I kind of tweak it. Now, of course, we could also in this take control of other aspects of the camera. Let's see if I can find him, find them here. Sometimes it's hard to see them in all the views. All right. This is probably right here, the camera target. And so if I were to move that, it's going to change how far down I'm looking versus how far up I'm looking. So again, I have that flexibility to kind of adjust it and tweak it. And sometimes that's really, really useful. So once I have the view set the way I want it, then I want to go ahead and come back here. Oops, there we go. And save the view. So I'll click the down arrow. I'll go to set view this time, not the camera, set view, named views, and we'll call this render three. Now, technically, in terms of the assignment, you only need two views that you would then render in the daytime and in the nighttime. Sometimes you want to change views. Sometimes you end up giving me way more views. That's also OK. So I'm, I'm completely OK with any of those options. Now, in this particular scene, I don't have the lights installed yet because uh, I moved it into uh, this, the, the ocean file. So I'm going to go grab those lights and bring them over. So let me save this for a second. Yes, I want to save it. And then let me open back up. Oops, I thought I had it open here. I don't. Let me open my Tahoe site. Give it a little time. Still thinking. At this point, it might be faster to just recreate the lights to begin with. <laughs> All right, well, I don't know. Maybe that'll end up loading. In the meantime, uh, it's not bad practice to, to show the creation of these lights again. So let me do a uh, layer for lighting. Uh, sometimes uh, you might do a layer for sight and then put things under the site like I have here, the lighting's fine. Let's do a sub layer for can lights. Oh. Ah, good, we got it. Never mind. we're not gonna have to. So all I need is all of these lights. So I'm gonna type SEL light. That's gonna select all of the lights. And I'm going to go to the edit menu and choose copy. Uh, and actually it would probably be helpful if I copied one other piece of information with it, just a reference file. So let's see here, let's zoom out. And let me do a line and turn on my end snap. Professor, can I ask a quick question? Um, sure, David, go ahead. While you're creating these lights, you're in the master file, correct? correct. You're not in the block file of the house. Yes, yes. Okay. So the V-Ray lights themselves need to be in the master site. That's why they don't come through when I switched from the um, Tahoe site to the ocean site. So what I've done since, and this is probably something you won't have to worry about because you're gonna be consistently working in one side or the other, but since I'm flipping back and forth, last class I created all these lights in the Tahoe file, 
the Tahoe site. I want to move them over into the ocean site because that's what I flipped to today. So I've selected all the lights. And then I went ahead and I drew an extra line right on the edge of my building here. And I've selected that as well. So when I go to edit and then copy, remember, this isn't a transform copy. This is an edit copy. That's going to let me jump from one Rhino file to another. Here I am. Let me back out here so we can see. And when I go to edit and then paste, all right, it should be somewhere. Uh, let me SEL light. Let's try it one more time. Paste. No objects added to selection. Well, that's annoying. Let me try it one more time. We should be able to copy them. So, and that's a copy to clipboard. And then we should be able to paste right here. Hmm. Two direction lights and 32 spotlights added to the selection. So where are they? Ah, there they are. So there were all those lights. And actually, I may have, uh, I'm going to do it one more time because I think I did it twice. Yeah, I did it twice. So let's hold on. Okay, one more time. Edit, paste. There they all are. Now I can move these and I can use that line that I that I created to help guide my movement. So there it is. Now we got to get away over here, which is kind of annoying. And let's see. All right, I'm just getting it close to my building. We'll zoom selected, and then we'll move again. And so actually, I was pretty close. Right, that edge was actually this edge. And then I have to rotate the whole thing. So I'm going to type rotate. And that then rotates over to here. And then all my lights are back in this scene now. Uh, and again, that's probably not something that you're going to have to worry about. But I went ahead and, and did it uh, so that we can move them. So now when I go into my render three view, I'm going to go to set view render three. There it is. And all my lights are installed in the scene correctly. So. I went ahead and I created those lights. It's possible that maybe we want to add some more lighting, but before we do that, let's take a test render. But I can't really do the test render until I set it up for a night scene. So I'm going to save this right now since I have all those lights installed. Yes, we'll save all the supporting files. And in the meantime, I'm going to download from the course website. Let's open up. Oh no, I lost my Chrome. I had this open for us ahead of time, but I lost it. So you guys have seen this before. Uh, it helps if I can type correctly. There we go. Under resources, we can go to the V-Ray quick rendering setups. And so we, we worked with the day scenes before. We're going to come down and start to work with the night scenes. So if you keep scrolling down, we get into the basic night scenes. So I have scene one and I have scene two. Obviously, you'd log in to be able to download these. The other thing that I'm going to leave as an option for you is I have three sunset scenes. And I would say that the sunset scenes could qualify for either the night or the day. So I'll leave that up to you. If you want to use any of those, you can download them and use them uh, as well. Let's start first with uh, the sunset is going to, we're going to see more out of it. So I'm going to do sunset scene two. So I'll leave this one up. I already have everything downloaded, so I don't really have to log in to, uh, to download it. But I'm going to go ahead and set this one up using my settings. So Theoretically, we already have our daytime settings correct. 
in here because we just did a render for daytime settings. So before I load in the nighttime settings, I'm going to open V-Ray. I'm going to go to the settings section right here, and I'm going to save the settings before I switch. And this will let me switch back and forth between night and day settings. And this is a really important piece of the puzzle. So let me go ahead and save this. So I'll click on save. And then in my folder here, I will go ahead and I'm going to create a VR opt file. This is going to be retreat day settings. And I'll click save. And that will let me come back to these particular settings. Likewise, I had the day settings set up in a different file. I could bring those same day settings into this file. So I have the day settings set. Now let's set this up for night settings. So I'm going to reset everything so we're all in its, its initial untouched state. And then I'm going to open this load render settings file. Now, when you download the um, sunset, it's going to contain a bunch of information with it. I have everything saved in uh, my resources folder under V-Ray HDRI here. And I have them by category. So I have night HDRIs and I have sunset HDRIs. I'm going to do the sunset one right now. And I forget which one I was using. Let's look at 059 for a second. And you see that I have these VR opt files saved. So this one is the very high settings for it. I'm going to go ahead and select it and then click on open. And it's going to load in all the settings for me. This isn't quite set because I need to go in and make sure that my environment is set correctly. So under background here, I have a map applied, a texture applied, but it may or may not be seen. So you may get a little orange circle that says, oh, you know what, it's missing. In my case, it appears to be correct. I could click on this folder and double check. Zero five nine, and it should be the uh, reference file right there. And that one was already set. We can kind of see a preview of it right there. Let me go back into my settings. That was for the background. Now here in the GI, we have to make sure that that one's set correctly as well. And it is because it doesn't have that little orange circle on it. So I'm happy that that's being set okay as well. Then we'll go back to my settings. We can close the environment drawer. We can look at the camera drawer here. Uh, my exposure value is currently set to eight. So it's, it's much more light coming in. We'll see if that'll work. We can also go into render output here. And right now it's set for a widescreen. I could change the image to match my viewport. So I could click this down and we could go to match viewport. It's gonna be a little bit different there. That means what I see on the screen here is gonna match, okay? So I've kind of tweaked these settings just a little bit. Everything should be okay. But before I actually move on, I do need to make sure that the sun has been turned off. Now that would be easy if I had a layer that was called sun and I should have done that to begin with. So let's close V right here. Let me zoom out and I should have the sun. There it is right there. That's my sun. Let's go ahead and make a sub layer for that. Let's call that sun. I'll right click on the sun layer and say change object layer. And then it's easy because I can just turn the sun off. And obviously for this, I would need the sun turned off because it's a nighttime rendering. So let's go back to render three and go to set view, render three. All right, so we're here. Let's go ahead and, and do a render and see what turns out. I'm going to save it first just in case it crashes. Now, the other thing that I've, I've told you about before that I, I recommend. Uh, is once we start getting into rendering, you're going to want to make sure that you have your caffeine app running. Right, so I have mine here. It's going to be uh, active for eight hours because these renders, the, the more advanced they get, the longer they're going to take. Let's look at a few other settings before I do this. Well, let's, we can do a test render first and then we'll come back to some of the other settings. Let's go ahead and click on render. And this is going to take a little bit of time, so bear with me.
All right, I can already tell that this is way, way, way too bright because of my, my lights inside. So let's stop the render. And then let's close that. And let me go back into my V-Ray. And that was because it was a difference between an exterior rendering and an interior rendering. So let's go back to camera. I told you that that eight seemed, seemed really weird. Let's go up to 14. And then let's go ahead and uh, render again. Still might be too bright. So I'm just noticing that my artwork is repeating on all of them. So probably need to make a few adjustments there. But you can already tell, based on how we're looking out the windows, that it's dark outside. And that's definitely a, a change and an improvement on, on what it is that we were trying to do. So I may need to adjust the exposure a little bit more. But before I let this render out fully, I'm going to go ahead and click on Stop. I want to introduce a few other concepts that are part of rendering. And we haven't talked about these just yet, but they will start to be important going forward. And so these used to be called render channels. They're now called render elements. And we want to add some of those render elements to our renderings. Now, this doesn't change the render time, but it gives us more once we get our renderings. So those are listed. If we come over to this right here, these would be our render elements. We currently don't have any, but if we click on it, you can see a bunch of uh, these presets that are that are something that we can uh, load in. So let's let's talk a little bit about what these are. Some of them work better than others, but what we can do is we can choose to turn on any one of these, and during the render, we will get that information as well. So, for example, if I turn on the background, right, it's going to render the background of the image independent of everything else that's in the image. So we can get a separate file that contains just the background. Let's go back here and look for some more. Let me right click. We turned on background. If we turned on lighting, for example, oops, it would render just the lighting in a scene. So just the light that's falling on an object. That can be useful. We could right click here. We can turn on something called Z-Depth. I want you to turn it on even though you were not ready to really talk about what it does but it renders in a black and white scale objects that are closer as bright white and objects that are further away as black. And you can actually set up what the near and far distances are, which is really, really powerful. Uh, something you can collage with in Photoshop a little bit later on. So I will cover that. Um, there are other things that you may want to turn on um, and you can kind of scroll down and see. One of the ones that I find really useful up here is the material ID color. And what that theoretically does is it renders each material as a particular color. That would allow you to go in and collage afterward in Photoshop really, really easily. So that one's usually a pretty good one. Uh, you could also just do an object ID. That means every object in the scene is going to have a different color. And that can be useful. So I've turned all of these on. With all of them on, I'm going to go back to my settings. I'm going to adjust my camera settings just a little bit more to make it a little bit darker. I'm going to go up to 15. And then we'll actually perform a render. Now, the hard part here is that these renders start to take much, much more time. We can, under our setting, also enable the um, render swarm, which is down here at the bottom, which maybe will allow us to use other resources in the DVC lab. Sometimes it works, sometimes it, diff it doesn't work. Um, we have auto discovery on, so we'll go ahead and turn that on and see if it helps us out just a little bit. Um, it doesn't always help, but it's worth a try. When we were in person, I could do a lot more with it um, and I can't do it as much remotely. So I have all of those options on. We'll go ahead and start this rendering in the background. So I'll click on render here. Oh, and I should have fixed my art. You know what? I'm going to just change the scene that I'm rendering in because I didn't fix that art. Uh, let's go to render two.
There we go. And we'll go ahead and render it again. Okay, so I'm gonna let this keep rendering. And while it's rendering, I'm gonna jump back over into my Tahoe file here, maybe. And we'll talk a little bit more about some of the other lights that we might install. So thus far, we've concentrated on just the lights. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Concentrated just on the lights that you would use uh, like the spotlights and the point lights. There is another type of a light. And for example, if I wanted to, light the undersides of the stairs, this might be useful. So let me zoom in, oops. This is where I was telling you, sometimes you have zooming challenges with this site. If you do, we're gonna turn off the big Tahoe block, select our object. Zoom selected. And then once we've done that, it's kind of recentered the view and it'll let us work with it a little bit better. I want to make sure that I'm still at an 18 millimeter. Let's go, oops, 18, not, there we go, 18. Uh, now, what I was talking about is adding a little bit of downlighting on these stairs. So what I can do is I can create some, a different kind of light that's called a rectangular light. It's right here. So I'm going to click on that rectangular light. And it asks me for a rectangular light corner. So we'll pick that. Let me do this upper stair. It's a little easier there. Rectangular length length. I'm going to go along the length of the stair. Rectangular light width. I'm going to snap to the midpoint of the stair. Right like that. And this is that re rectangular light. If I look at it in one of my side views, there it is in the top view. If I look at it in the side view, it's coplanar with the bottom of my stair. And I can't really have that. It's like, it's like the uh, other lights, the, the, the spotlights, where they have to be slightly below where the stair would be. So I'll move it down just a little bit. So now it's slightly below the stair. And from here, I need to go in and edit the, the uh, material property or the, the light properties. So let me go ahead and edit in the V-Ray Asset Editor here. There it is, the rectangle light. And we'll call this stair light, again, for clarity. And the reason that I don't talk about stair lights right away is dealing with the uh, intensity is much, much harder. So we're going to work in uh, radiant power or watts again. And I'm going to leave it at 100. But depending on the size of the rectangle, we may have to up the intensity because it's over a much bigger area. So it's not as simple as a light bulb where we say, oh, we want something that's like a 60 watt bulb. In this, we're spreading that wattage over the size of the rectangle. So figuring out what the uh, intensity needs to be really takes a little bit of trial and error. I'm gonna leave it at 100 here. I'm gonna set my color at 255, 214, 170. So let's go here to 0, 255, 255, 214, and 170. And there it is. Go ahead and close it. There's my color, that's good. Uh, under options here, we also wanna check the box for invisible. That means we won't see the light itself if we were looking at it. You could leave it um, unchecked, that would make it visible, and then you'd see the little rectangle, which may or may not be what you want. I do want it to cast shadows, and notice there is also an option for it to be double-sided, so we could shine light in both directions. Okay, so the rest of these are all fine and we'll leave those settings. Now, before I actually render it, I would wanna come in here and do a test render to see if I could even see it. So let's do a little test render and see. This one, I believe was still in the day, daytime settings. So we might not get the best results. Uh, while that's loading up, let me switch over into my, oh, my angle's kind of bad here. We're seeing through, we obviously have much darker. So let me stop the, well, let me show you. Remember we, we set up those render elements right here are where they all are. So we had RGB color, that's what we normally render, but notice we also have, well, alpha comes by default, but we have lighting, uh, didn't show us much. Let's look at the background. Again, doesn't show us much. How about object ID? We should see something here. Well, these are really useful. 
How about ZDEF? Nobody's going to show me anything. Well, that was a big flop. We'll go back to RGB color for right now. I think it's my angle is bad on this. So let me stop this and let's fix that. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. And let's try that render again, see if we can get some better results here. All right, so let's jump over. And obviously I'm going back and forth with these so we can kind of see it here. There is my stair. And there's a little bit of that light that I set up, that rectangular light. So now that I've confirmed that it's, it's showing, it would just be a matter of copying it to the rest of the stair. So I can take this one, and if I could type, I can choose copy, and I can make it appear on all of the stairs. The last one failed miserably. Let's try that again. And there they all are. I have one mistake that was back here. There we go. Let me erase that one. We'll zoom back. And then we can do another little test render of these to see all of those stairs lighting up. So let me jump back over here. Let's render again. And in the meantime, we'll come back to my frame buffer here. And this was still my last view. It hasn't, it hasn't actually rendered up yet. There we go. So now you can see that we've switched this over into the night view. I'll let that kind of continue to render out, but that's ultimately what we're going for today. We're looking for the interior night view where we're rendering out uh, where the, the sky would be black, et cetera. Next class, we're gonna move to the exterior, which will help you fine tune the settings and whatever. Once you have the V-Ray settings correct, it's not a bad idea to save them just in case. So we're gonna let this render out. But in the meantime, I'm gonna come back into my settings. I'm gonna click the save icon. And I had previously saved, let's go into today. There's my retreat day settings. Let me jump over here and turn, change these to night settings. And you might even add night settings dash interior. If you were to change the, um, the camera exposure value, for example, you interior versus exterior, that might start to matter. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this continue to render out. Again, it's not relevant that you have to stay and wait and watch for this. Uh, the last thing that I will say is let's, I don't know if these, maybe these elements need to wait for everything to be, um, to be fully rendered out. Yeah, they're not, not showing. Um, so it's possible that maybe uh, the render has to finish before we can do it. However, when we go to save them, typically you've clicked on this disc icon, the little down facing arrow allows you to save all image channels to separate files. That's what you want to get in the habit of doing that saves everything that you've created, all the different channels. And the channels really aren't necessarily relevant unless you want to use Photoshop to do some post-processing, in which case they're really, really useful. Um, so getting in the habit now is better later on. And we'll talk about mo those in, in much greater detail going forward, but I at least want to introduce the concept to you today. Okay, so I'm going to let this continue to render out for a while, and I'll confirm that those channels are working but I don't need you to sit here uh, and watch me do that. So like I said last class or earlier today, today is about getting further forward. So it's not much of a big transition to go from the um, day settings to the night settings. We already have the view theoretically set up. It's just about fine tuning and doing another iterative rendering. 
So spend your time getting your geometry set. Well done. Insert a few select chairs, et cetera. Like, kind of like staging a house if you're going to sell it. And as you do those little bits of adding, do a nice render that is set in nighttime. Make sure you save your VR opt file. So you save your settings for night, save your settings for day before you even load the night. And that means you can go back to the day render and you can go back to the night render uh, or, or vice versa going forward. Okay, so I'm gonna let you go a little bit early. That gives you an extra uh, at least 15 minutes of work time. So use your time wisely. Um, we will have our, our typical check-ins this week. Really, it's going to be about fine-tuning things and problems that you're having, render problems, et cetera. So uh, please come with your questions because I'd love to try to help you through them. Uh, I know Abdul already asked some questions today, so it's a perfect example of good questions to ask. So bring those same kinds of questions to your check-ins, and um, I'll let you all go.